Worthy, and this is the American Bible Challenge. special musical co-host. He's won nine Grammys, Mr. Kirk Franklin! Great to have you here. But right now, three teams, including rodeo champions, a Grammy nominee, and a Christian hip-hop group will go head-to-head -head in a lively contest of faith, fun, and facts to win cash for their favorite charities and a chance to come back and play for $100,000 in the American Bible Challenge Grand Finale. Let's meet our first team. Without a doubt, it's hard to be a Christian in rodeo. There's a lot of endorsement with alcohol and tobacco. There's a lot of stuff on the road that a young man can get exposed to before their character helps them to be a champion. In 1994, I was standing on the back of the buck and shoot. My friend rode his bull right in front of my buck and shoot, and his bull throwed him off, and it killed him. That was really a defining moment for me because when my friend was laying there lifeless, he would never have a chance to ride when I would because I was still alive and able to. In Jesus' mighty name. And I felt God's hand on my life. And in a vision, we had the idea for a ministry called Western Harvest Ministries. We work with young people to help them to be better role models or understand what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ while competing in the professional arena. We are the Cowboy Crusaders! Yeah! From the Lone Star State, give a big howdy to the Cowboy Crusaders, Jeff Scott and Kelly. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about your charity and what $20,000 would mean to it. We have an outreach called Conquering the Beast, and we help young men with low self-esteem. And yeah. people love rodeo, and we all have come from that. So we uh, do training camps in addition to City Crusades. It's really going to help us to put on some effective outreach. That is so awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Luck. Good luck today, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Let's meet some of your competition. <laughs> Hey, I'm Carrie Job. I'm a Christian music artist, and I live in Dallas, Texas. Women of Faith is amazing. It's women who, over the years, have come together in our lives and to tell our stories, story after story after story of brokenness and hardship and shame. Some of you are in the most difficult days of your life. Sheila Walsh and Lisa Harper, they're amazing friends of mine. Women work so hard. And to give them a place where they can just come for a couple of days and laugh and cry and discover they're not alone. It's impacting our nation, and I love that we get to be a part of Women of Faith. We're playing for A21, which is this amazing organization that frees women and children who've been sold into slavery. When you're in an arena with 16,000 women and you bring up something like A21, and they go, together, we could actually make a huge difference. Please welcome the Women of Faith, Sheila, Carrie, and Lisa. Welcome to the shows, ladies. What would $20,000 do for you? Carrie and Sheila have actually been to houses where a girl was literally chained to a bed as a, a mm. sex slave. And that $20,000 takes her all the way through being rescued, yeah. clothed, loved, fed, um, trauma counseling, yeah. until she's at a point of actually living free. Yeah. Well, I've always said wisdom is knowledge plus scars, you know? Right. So, like well, good luck today. Yeah. Let's meet our final team. I'm Scott Free with my crew Double and Enlightenment coming at you from Team City Takers. We've all had rough lives. I lost my father at the age of six. He was murdered. By fourth grade, you know, I had my own gun. Doing drugs. Deep down, I, I, it didn't fulfill me. I knew I wanted more. My values began to change. My priorities began to change. And I became born again. I believe that God changed us. He saved us. But he grew us up in the hip hop culture so that we can go back in that culture. God is real. City Takers exist to transform the urban and hip hop culture with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We do that through outreach, missions, and discipleship all around the city of Atlanta and really all around the nation. Hey, welcome to the church. This is how I be for real. See, it's really not the steeple. The church is not the building, but the church is the people. 
What's going on, Shaman Enlightenment? Yo, this is your boy Double. And I'm Scott Free. And we are City, City Takers from the ATL. Yes, y'all did. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Here to represent from Atlanta, Georgia. Big shout out to my City Takers, yeah. Yeah. Enlightenment Scott yeah. Free and Double. Yeah. Woo, from my town, man. Yeah. 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 Tell me what $20,000 would mean for your charity. God is doing so much in the city of Atlanta using hip hop music, you know, reaching young people, you know, who are following these, these secular rappers, you know, with, with drugs, alcohol, and all this other stuff. So we've identified uh, 12 urban missionaries in 12 major cities around the U.S. We need to be able to hire somebody to kind of oversee that whole multiplication process yeah. for, for city takes. Awesome, man. Right. Well, good luck today. Hope you nah, leave here nah, well. Jeff, uh, I have a lot of respect for you and what you do. We gotta, we gotta give you something to make you a little bit more hip hop. <laughs> we gotta bling you out. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's for you right there. Yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta represent ATL the right way. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys. That's awesome, man. Right. Well, good luck. Is everybody ready to play this yeah. game? Yes, Let's do it. Yeah. All right, here's how we are gonna do it. You're all gonna start out playing as teams of three. Now, as the game goes on, you're gonna go down to two players and finally, just one player. At the end, the top two teams will go head to head and one of those teams will be leaving here with $20,000 for their charity tonight. <laughs> and a shot at $100,000. All right, let's play the American Bible Challenge. <laughs> And to start things off, I'd like to introduce noted race car driver, Trevor Bain. Hey, Jeff, I'm Trevor Bain, youngest driver ever to win the Daytona 500, just the day after my 20th birthday. Look, I know I'm young, and there are a lot of things from back in the day that I just can't wrap my head around, like Paul Newman, race car driver, actor. I thought the guy made salad dressing. But there are older references I do know, and they're all in the Bible. And that's why I'm thrilled to announce today's first category, Biblical Bumper Stickers. The game's fun, so good luck, everybody. Hey, Jeff, you're a pretty funny guy. You ever try anything besides TV before? And you might not be too old for a stand-up comedy career. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. Wow. Well, as you just saw, this game is called Biblical Bumper Stickers. We're going to show you a bumper sticker. You're going to buzz in and tell me who in the Bible might have had it on their mode of transportation. Each correct multiple choice answer is going to be worth 10 points, minus 10 points for incorrect answers, Let's take a look at the first one. My other car is a chariot of fire. Here's the question. What Old Testament prophet would most likely have had this bumper sticker? Ezekiel, Elijah, Eli, or Evil Knievel? Carrie. Elijah. Elijah's absolutely right. Good job. Women of faith are on the board. Take a look at the board. Our next bumper sticker. I was here. What Old Testament prophet would most likely have had this bumper sticker? Noah, Josiah, Jonah, Pinocchio. Carrie. Jonah. Oh. Jonah is yeah. absolutely right. It is Jonah. <laughs> By the way, guys, you know you're, you're allowed to play this game. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, take a look at the board and our next bumper sticker. <laughs> My donkey is smarter than your donkey. Here's the question. What Old Testament prophet would most likely have had this on his talking donkey? Balak, Baal, Balaam, or Shrek? Carrie. Balaam. Balaam is absolutely right. <laughs> nice going, guys. All right, right now, I'm going to give each team a chance to pick up 25 additional points, but you can put your buzzer down. Now, we ask 100 Version app users, that's the online Bible, the following question. Which event in the life of Jesus would you most want to have been present at? The nativity, the crucifixion, or the resurrection? Which was the most popular answer given by those 100 Version app users? You pick the right one, you'll pick up 25 additional points. So teams, talk it over while you talk it over together at home. Welcome back to the American Bible Challenge. Well, before the break, we told you we asked 100 Version app users 
which is the online Bible, the following question. Which event in the life of Jesus would you most want to have been present at? The nativity, the crucifixion, or the resurrection? During the break, each of you wrote down what you thought would be the most popular answer on your tablet. If you pick the right one, you'll get 25 additional points. So teams, if you would, show me your answers. So we have the resurrection, the resurrection, and the resurrection. Everybody, so city takers, why do you think the resurrection is the answer? That ultimate sacrifice that he did on, on the crucifixion was the ultimate part of love, but the resurrection really put the stamp on that thing. Yeah. And we could be set free, <laughs> and we could live abundantly forever. Yeah. That, that, that made it. That's good. There you go. All right, well, let's see what the most popular answer was. The resurrection. Yeah. game to go, but right now it is time to get you guys out from behind those podiums and do a little something physical. This next game is called Thou Shalt Not Exhale. <laughs> all right, in this game, all of our teams are going to play at the same time, and here's how it's going to work. Each team has a table of cards representing four possible answers. I'll read a fact about one of them. And you've got to use a straw to pick up the card you want, hurry over, and place it onto your pedestal. You can't touch the cards with your hands, and if it drops to the floor, go get another one and keep trying. The first player to get the right card onto your pedestal wins that turn. Here we go, here we go. It's that easy. Then I'll ask another question for the next set of players and so on. You will have 90 seconds. The team that gets the most correct cards in their tray first earns 50 points. Everybody got it? Yes. Here are your four choices for the game. Either the Apostle John, the Apostle Paul, Job, whose book is in the Old Testament, or the Beatles' Ringo Starr. <laughs> All right, let's put 90 seconds on the clock, please. And here is your first fact. Had a brother named James. John, 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 go. Go, Kelly, come on. All right, everybody's going for John. The city takers are out in front. Correct, John. Next player, replace Pete as drummer boy. Women of Faith get to Ringo first, but oh, she drops it. So does city takers. And now the Cowboys. Women of Faith have got it again. Correct, Ringo. Studied under Gamaleo. No, no, no. Looks like they're all going for Paul, and it is a race. Get that, too! Correct, Paul. His birth name is Richard. Oh. Ringo, 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 Ringo. They've all chosen Ringo. Everybody's having a tough time holding on to their card. The Cowboys just jumped out in front. Correct, Ringo. In one bad day, lost his camels and his sheep were burned. All the teams are going to Joe. Now the Cowboys are racing to the podium. Correct, Joe. A lad born to Zebedee. City takers are going for Joe, but the Cowboys and women of faith are choosing John. Who's going to get there first? It was John, correct. Next player. Hung out at the Cavern Club. Ringo, 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 Ringo. Oh, it's a tied game now, and they are all going for Ringo. Ten seconds left. The women of faith have it out in front. Ringo, correct. Next player. Set the line. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will be. Get that done. Get that done. Get that Women of Faith, you win with three points there. Way to go. Each team had two on that. How close could it be? All right, ladies, you get the 50 points. So let's recap the scores so far. Cowboy Crusaders have 25. City Takers have 25. And in the lead, the Women of Faith have 105. All right, when we come back, the questions are going to get harder, and only two from each team will play. What a mess. Still ahead, one of our most intense battles yet. Oh, gosh. That one hurt. <laughs> you got one more calf to rope. You got one more calf to rope. I'm a nervous You're a nervous wreck. I'm a nervous wreck. wreck. This could be interesting. This could. that all 
of you know a lot about the Bible, but I'm betting there's one person, one person on each team that knows a little bit more than the other two. Well, guess what? That person is going to be sitting out this round, okay? But they shouldn't get too comfortable because they're going to have to come back later on when the questions get harder Ooh. and there's more pressure. So, City Takers, who yeah. is the Bible wizard on your team? Well, we're going to send back my man Enlightenment, right? Enlightenment. All right, take a step back. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, this time our category is My Four Little Ponies of the Apocalypse. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I am going to either give you a descriptive phrase about heaven taken from Revelation 4 or the name of a My Little Pony. Now, if you think it's from Revelation, you'll answer Bible ends. If you think it's My Little Pony, you'll answer Magic Friends. You got it? Yes. 50 points for each correct answer. Here is your first phrase or name. Emerald Rainbow. Uh, is that Bible okay. Ends That's or Magic Friends? And I never watched My Little Pony, so I would have no <laughs> <laughs> You would lose all your street cred if right, you admitted my, to watching My Little right, Pony. I, OK, I have a little sister, so I guess that kind of gives me validation. So I'm, we're going to go with Magic Friends. All right, you said you think Emerald Rainbow is Magic Friends. Yes. Actually, it is Bible ends. Ooh. Revelation 4.3 says, A rainbow like an emerald circles the heavenly throne. Uh, wow. Wow. Uh, I didn't know that, man. Come on, man. All right. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. I'm betting you guys haven't spent a lot of time in front of My Little Pony. <laughs> my what? daughter had every My Little Pony they had. <laughs> well, you're yeah, a cowboy, I guess. Yeah, you know, the yeah, attraction yeah. of horses and ponies. All right, so who is the Bible expert on this team? We're going to go with Jeff. Jeff? Well, sure, Jeffs are always right. smarter than everybody else. Yeah, right. So. <laughs> All right, Jeff, if, if you will take a step back there. I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of Texas and uh, the American Cowboys. We'd like to present you with your very own Are you hat. kidding me? It's our form of bling bling and where we come from. <laughs> Hold on to it, I'll get it at the end of the show. <laughs> By the way, not saying, but they brought me something and they brought me something. I <laughs> <laughs> brought you a lip gloss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, you ready? Yes, sir. Take a look at the board. Sapphire Shores. Is that Bible Ends or Magic Friends? I'm going to go with Bible Ends. That was my think? first gut, too. I really think about it. I don't uh, remember of My Little Pony being a shore. Well, I know that there is sapphire in my ponies, but we got to go with our gut on that. Bible Ends? I think so. Bible Ends. Bible Ends is absolutely incorrect. <sighs> Uh-oh. Scott, you said, yeah. I know there's a sapphire in My Little Pony. You said that uh, out yes. loud. I got a daughter, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, women of faith, who knows the most? Oh, not at least a Harper. Brain Le box. Brain, Brain box. Yeah. Yeah. Donkeys and rocks. Donkeys. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lisa, we'll step back if you would. <laughs> Take a look at the board. Here is your question. Golden Harvest. Bible ends or magic friends? Who would call a pony golden harvest? I don't know. It makes me think a Bible ends. Don't you think it's magic friends? I don't golden remember golden being that golden, golden harvest. I mean, there's an emerald sea, there's pearly gates, there are gold streets. I don't remember it ending up at the harvest. It sounds too easy to be Bible ends. I don't know. What are we going with? Magic friends. Magic friends. Magic friends. It is actually, in fact, magic friends. <laughs> Our next category is called Kirk's Righteous Remix. You're going to love this. You are going to hear a quick song from Kirk and the choir, and then he's going to ask you a question about it. Correct answers are worth 50 points. Here's your first Righteous Remix. Kirk, take it away. Let's go. Redeeming sons of Abraham doesn't bring you guarantees. Brand new sons of I like this. 
a lot. It's really nice. So that's cool. According to Matthew 3, 9, God can raise up children for Abraham from what? From these. Dang. Man. When I saw Abraham, I thought Isaac, but that's Old Testament, so. Grains of sand? I don't know. What would you say? From the least of these. From the least of these. Yes. Actually, Scott, as you were talking it out, you said grains of sand. That was so close. The correct answer is, in fact, stones. Stones. Saying God could raise the brand new sons of Abraham from stones. stones. I was going to say rock, but. Right. If you'd have said rock, you'd have probably been in good shape. Uh, yeah. I, I had no idea. All right, my cowboy it. buddies. Are right, you ready for another remix? Okay. Okay. Well, here's a good dance mix for you. Uh, Let's go. All right, Kirk. What Philistine idol fell on its face before the ark? Um, uh, I'm not bringing it up. Dagon? Huh? Dagon? Dagon. Um, gave an image. Dagon. Dagon. Came up with, yeah. Dagon. Not gonna be it. Dagon is absolutely right for 50 yeah. points. Oh, man. <laughs> Actually, a cowboy word. Let's get moving for the day gone. Right? <laughs> All right. I understand. So you like these? I like these this little remixes. Great. This is cool. Kirk, you got another one for us? Let's go. God laid down a fish sheet full of non-kosher food like ham that's barbecued or lobster that's the spoon. God laid down a fish sheet full of non-kosher food to get Peter to Of putting dude in a Bible verse there. That's all. <laughs> so what is the question associated with this song? After he saw a vision of unclean food, Peter went to the house of what Gentile in Acts 10? I am pretty sure it's Cornelius. What do you think? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love your honesty. I'm just yeah. thinking about, like, pork, and I'm hungry. I know, I'm thinking <laughs> this, I know. But I'm pretty sure, are okay. you, I'm pretty sure it's I'll Cornelius. I will go with Cornelius then. Cornelius. Actually, the correct answer is Cornelius. <laughs> You're exactly right. Good job. There you go. Let's take a look at our scores. City Takers have 25. Cowboy Crusaders, 75. Women of Faith, 205. So let's switch it up, everybody. questions yet, and at the end of it, one team will be gone. Can't wait to see who's moving on after these words. All right, Kirk and the American Bible Challenge Choir. Challenge. Well, it has been a tough fight so far, but it is time for our teams to take the gloves off and to go for it. At the end of this round, the two highest scoring teams will take center stage in the final revelation and a shot to win $20,000 for their charity and move on for a chance at $100,000. So it all comes down to something we like to call the chosen three. I'm going to ask each player one question, but here's the thing. That question has three correct answers. Each right answer you give me will be worth 100 points. Give me all three right answers, you'll get 300 points. Now, women of faith, we're gonna start with you. Right now, you are in the lead. If you get two of these questions right, 
you are a lock to play in the final revelation. All right, take a look at the board. Here's your question. Which three of these books of the Bible mention Michael by name? Daniel, Jude, Psalms, Luke, Revelation, or Genesis? I'm thinking um, Luke, Daniel, Revelation. That's where I'd go. Do you want that to be your answer? No, because Genesis is in there too. Let me go, um, golly jeepers. Um, Genesis, Daniel, Revelation. Genesis, Daniel, and Revelation. We said you needed two to guarantee yourself a spot. Yes, sir. Which one are you the most confident about? Revelation. Revelation? Is Revelation correct? Feeling better? A little. Is Genesis correct? could be interesting. This could. If I Daniel's could. right, you're a lock to play in the final revelation. If not, it could be the guys duking it out. Yeah. Is Daniel correct? <laughs> Indeed it is. Congratulations, ladies. So you got the two you needed. We know Genesis was wrong. What, what would have been your well, next choice? Well, my gut went with Luke first, and I'm thinking now it's Luke. Is Luke correct? No. Oh, shoot. It was I would have never guessed you. Never guessed you. Well, it doesn't matter. You got Daniel in Revelation. You guaranteed us yourself a spot in the final Revelation. Whoa. Let's move on. All right, here we go, city takers. Here's where we stand. Mm -hmm. You need at least one correct answer to stay in the game, okay? To have a shot at going on to the final revelation. Two would be better, three would be really good. You ready? Got it. I'm ready. Got All right, it. let's take a look at your question. On, As stated in 1 Samuel 17 40, which three of these are items that David carried with him to fight Goliath? Helmet, ram's horn, staff, bag, sling, or sword? I'm thinking it's not helmet. Okay. I'm thinking it's not a ram's horn. Okay. And I'm thinking it's not a sword either. Okay. So I would have to go with a staff, because he picked up his staff. I would have to go with a sling, because he had to shoot the rock. And I would go with bag, because he had to have a place to keep his rocks. Come on. Okay. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Sound like you know the story to me. <laughs> All right. So I told you you had to have one right yeah. to stay in the game. Does Enlighten have one right? You bet he does. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> two would be better. Are there two correct answers up there? Come on. Yes, there are. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Got to be feeling pretty good about oh, Sling. Is right. Sling right, too? Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. 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 yeah, great job, man. Good work. Thank you. Come on, come on, boy. Come on. All right, Cowboy Crusaders, Jeff, it is up to you. And you must get all three answers yep. correct to make it to the final revelation round, okay? Good luck. Take a look at the board. Here is your question. Solomon asked God for wisdom, but which three of these things did God say Solomon did not ask for? Peace, wealth, death of enemies, unity, long life, or power? He didn't ask for wealth. He didn't last, ask for a long life 
Okay. So, uh, power, wealth, and long life. Okay. Told you you had to have three correct answers to move on to the final revelation. Is wealth one of those correct answers? Yes, it is. Is long life one of those correct answers? Yes, it is. He didn't ask if I all think you do. I'm, I'm a nervous wreck now. So <laughs> I'm a nervous You're a nervous wreck. wreck. I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> yes, city takers. If power is correct, you're going home. If power is incorrect, you, you guys are going home. You got one more calf to rope. You got one more calf to rope. Is yeah. that how you say it in That's cowboy it. language? <laughs> you got one more calf to rope. All right, to determine who goes on to the final revelation, is power correct? not asked for. Indeed it was, death of enemies. Man, you guys, it's been, thank you so much for being here. Everybody, you can come back up. Thank you for the hat, but more importantly, thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Breathing into the life of these young men. We've got $2,500 for you. I hope that helps somebody's life. Okay. God bless you, safe travels. We'll see you again. Thanks, y'all. Faith and city takers, it is down to you too. Ooh. Now, in the final revelation today, we are going to be asking questions about this category Egypt. Oh, wow. And you can bet the questions are going to be tough. That's why I'm going to give you 10 minutes for some good old fashioned Bible study. So, Thank here you, are your Bibles. Thank you go you. backstage to your study rooms to prepare. And when you get there, you will have a tablet loaded with U version, the electronic okay. Bible, if you'd like to use that as well. So good luck to both of you, and off you go. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up next, $20,000 for charity and two teams looking for divine inspiration about Egypt. The American Bible Challenge will be right back. Kirk, take it away. Safe and secure. Challenge. Well, with $20,000 for their charities up for grab tonight, women of faith and city takers are now backstage frantically cramming on Egypt. Um, Python and Ramses were the store cities for Pharaoh. The reason they ended up in Egypt was because once there was a new king, Joseph meant nothing to him. That's right. So they had been living there freely, but That's now right. suddenly they're captives. It was 10 players, I thought it was seven. Yes, the plague of blood. All right. Um, the plague of frogs. Uh huh. Nets. Flies, oh. plague on livestock, boils, okay. hail. Uh, the locusts, and oh. then the plague of darkness. When Moses the water turned to blood. Moses when he, what, what water or water? The Dead Sea is what turned red to blood? Was it the Dead Sea? It was the Dead Sea. Look, look at that plague. Remember that Moses, she hid him for three months, and he came from the, it's important for us to remember he came from the tribe of Levite. Right. This is how it is that you know it's not working. Oh. Actually, it is. We had the NIV version. So yeah. we're going to do it, and you know it's like Moses. We're going to get our people. Say hello to Moses. Moses. Yeah. Well, Bible study is officially over, so let's see what our teams learned about Egypt. City takers, get on out of here. Mm -hmm. yes. Welcome back, guys. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So was study time helpful? Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 
Good. Well, what happens now will determine if you come back for our second semifinal. So good luck. City takers, you ready for this? Yeah, yes. Ready, man. Here's ready. how Final Revelation works. You will have one minute to answer as many questions as you can on Egypt. Now, I'm going to ask you each a question one at a time. First you, then you, then you. Go in order. If you do not know the answer, you can say pass, and I will move on to the next question, okay? The other team is backstage in a soundproof room. They have stopped studying. They will play the exact same questions. The team with the most right answers wins. It's that easy. Right. Good luck. Can Good you day. dim the lights, please? Put 60 seconds on the clock, if you would. Let's start the clock. What Egyptian river was turned to blood? Dead Sea. Uh, incorrect. Name the official in Egypt to whom Joseph was sold. Pharaoh. Uh, incorrect. What Egyptian was a slave to Sarah? Pass. Whose bones were taken out of Egypt and buried in the promised land? Moses. Uh, incorrect. What was the fourth plague that infested Egypt? Frogs. Incorrect. The phrase, out of Egypt I called my son, is found in the book of what Old Testament prophet? Um, pass. Okay. After, inter inter after interpreting Pharaoh's dream, Joseph predicted what catastrophic event would occur in Egypt? <sighs> pass. Name one of the two sons born to Joseph in Egypt. Isaac. Incorrect. Matthew 2 oh. says Joseph and oh, time's man. up. We blew everything. We blew everything. <laughs> All right. Let's go back and look at the questions. What Egyptian river was turned to blood? That was the Nile. The Nile. The Nile River. Named the official in Egypt to whom Joseph was sold. That was Potiphar. What Egyptian was a slave to Sarah? Hagar, whose bones were taken out of Egypt and buried in the Promised Land, that was Joseph. Uh, what was the fourth plague that infested Egypt? That was flies. The phrase, out of Egypt, I called my son, is found in the book of what Old Testament prophet? That was Hosea. Uh, and after interpreting Pharaoh's dream, Joseph predicted what catastrophic event would occur in Egypt? That was a famine or a, a, a oh, drought. That's right. So... <laughs> you didn't get any correct, but stranger things have happened. <laughs> all right? Yeah. It's all right. So let's take Amen. this opportunity to bring out women of faith. Come on out, ladies. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies. We're excited to be here. Ooh, ooh. So did uh, study time help at all? Refresh, from, refresh some things in your mind? It did. Yeah. Well... City takers did not get a correct answer. Aww. So one right answer, you'll win $20,000 and a chance to play in our $100,000 American Bible Challenge grand yeah. finale. So, one way or the other, somebody is winning $20,000 for their charity. Somebody, $5,000. We're going to find out who it is right after this. Bible Challenge. Well, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. In one minute, one team is walking out of here with $20,000 for their charity. But nobody leaves here empty-handed. The second-place team will take home $5,000 for their charity. So, Women of Faith, are you ready for this? We are ready. All right, as I told you, your opponents got zero right answers, so you just need one right answer to win. Uh, if you do this, you will be going on to our second semifinal. <laughs> City takers, if you would, will you step back over there, please? Ladies, I will ask you questions in order. First you, then you, then you. Okay. If you do not know the answer, you can say pass, and I will move on to the okay. next question, okay? okay? Good luck. Can we dim the lights, please? Put 60 seconds on the clock. Start the clock. What Egyptian river was turned to blood? The Nile. That's all you need right there. There we go. Come on back, guys. Women of Faith, that means you have won $20,000 for your charity A21 campaign. You guys play great. $5,000 to you. Keep listening.
people, man. We have faith. You are going to be coming back for our semifinals to play against the winners of other shows for a chance of the grand prize of $100,000 for your charity. Because of you, we're doing another season of shows and donating even more money to charity. And a big thank you to our musical co-host, the legendary Kirk Franklin. Boy, am I glad to have you here. But right now, we have three teams, including pro football stars, girls full of grace, and some self-proclaimed rednecks who will go head-to-head -head in a lively contest of faith, fun, and facts to win cash for their favorite charities and a chance to come back and play for $100,000 in the American Bible Challenge Grand Finale. Let's meet our first team. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Mike. And I'm Rachel. And, and we're, we're the Redeemed, Redeemed Rednecks from Jackson, Jackson Georgia. Georgia. Of course I'm a redneck. When I want breakfast, I just go out back and get me an egg. Mike and Jeremiah are two of my favorite rednecks. We like the outdoor setting. We like to raise our own livestock, gather our own food. Don't let the camo fool you. Don't let the southern accent throw you off. Jeremiah has gone to Georgia Tech. I'm actually working on my master's degree in environmental engineering. And then we have the professor. I do have uh, a degree in theology. I got my master's in educational psychology. We're playing for the Burning Bush Youth and Family Intervention Center. This is a great organization that's just right in line with what our church is all about. Our community has been really hard hit by the recession. So many people have lost their jobs. They're just struggling. So that's why we want to support this ministry. From Jackson, Georgia, give a big shout out for the Redeemed Rednecks, Jeremiah, Rachel, and Mike. Welcome. <laughs> We saw a little bit about the charity that you're playing for, but in your community, the unemployment rate was just sky high. And, and so your church and your friends got together. Tell everybody what you did for them, for them. Well, we thought we have a bunch of rednecks, so everybody's got scrap metal in their yard. <laughs> so we pulled it all together, sold the scrap metal, and used that money toward purchasing cars for single moms. Oh, that is what this show is all about. God, I hope you win a lot of money for your charity yeah. today. Nice to have you here. Let's meet some of your competition. Veggies. Broccoli? Okay. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I am the Chief Financial Officer for the Life Facts Program. Growing up, my mom and dad had started a point of separation, and really she came at a point where she was wondering if her own life was going to work. She decided that, you know what, I'm going to give my life to Christ and started the Life Facts ministry from our home. We'd open our doors in the middle of the morning and just find people just weeping. Sometimes these were young women who were being sexually abused and they didn't have a place to go to. So we'd take them into our home and we'd be able to have a place for them to not just eat, but also to stay. And through that, they started working with a local food bank and we were able to touch people, not just our local neighbors, but even expanding to the community. With Life Facts, we feed over 6,000 people a month. We do reach people from every walk of life. Right now, we are unloading the mega, mega blessings and putting them in the appropriate locations so that everyone gets fed. I'm Elizabeth. I'm Cindy. I'm Ezra Lee. And we're the Girls of Grace! From San Diego, California, please welcome the Girls of Grace, Ezra Lee, Elizabeth, and Cindy. I got to tell you, that, that is powerful, because if it's just about what you know, it's not very interesting. But when you see people taking care of the people that so many others have discarded, that's when it starts being appealing to people that don't even understand it. Yeah, this is so awesome what you do. Thank you. Good luck today. Hope you win lots of money. Let's meet our last team. 50, 60. Hi, I'm Benjamin Watson. I'm a tight end. I uh, play football for the Cleveland Browns. I've been playing football since I was a kid. It was always my favorite sport. Everybody watches the NFL. The NFL is worldwide. So it's incumbent upon us as followers of Christ to tell people about him. 
God talks about there being different members of one body and everybody having different roles to play, just like a football team. You know, I'm the tight end, Reggie's the punter. Uh, Robert here, he's our spiritual mentor. I get the privilege of working with these guys to stay focused on what's really important, and that's their faith. Part of our foundation, one more, we do a lot of different things, and one of those is football camp. On the hop, on the hop, on the hop. The great thing is you're able to teach them about football, but also teach them about something important to life. If you listen to your parents, if you get good grades in school, all those things are fundamental right now for the rest of your life. One, two, three, two! Three. These guys are very familiar with a Hail Mary from Pro Football's Cleveland Browns. It is first and faith. Tight end, Benjamin Watson, punter Reggie Hodges, and team minister, Robert Brooks. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. It's so cool what you guys are doing. Now, tell everybody a little bit about the charity you're playing for. Yeah, well, our charity is called One More, and uh, it's something my wife and I started back in 2008 with the primary goal of sharing the love and hope of Christ to one more soul. And uh, we do that by meeting people's needs, by promoting education, by joining with existing charities. The hope is that when we help one person, they turn around and pass the blessing on to somebody else. Yeah, that's so cool. Thanks for being here. Yes, sir, thank you. All right, well, you guys ready to play this game? Let's get started. All right, well, here's how we're going to do it. You're going to start out playing together as teams of three. As the game goes on, we'll whittle that down to two. And then finally, just one player. Now, at the end of the game, the top two teams will go head-to-head, -head, and one of those teams will be leaving here with $20,000 for their charity and a shot at $100,000. Well, that's neat. Ready to win some money for your charities, everybody? Let's play the American Bible Challenge. All right, our first game is called B.C. Harmony. Now, back in the day, folks were looking for love just like the rest of us. And in this game, we take biblical characters and imagine what their online dating profiles would have looked like. <laughs> so see if you can identify our biblical lonely hearts. Now, each correct answer is worth 10 points. You get it wrong, that's minus 10 points. Okay? Here is your first card. Profession. Profit. Biggest weaknesses. I'm judgmental about foreign cities, but I'm learning. Passions, preaching, sailing, walks on the beach after being vomited up by a fish. <laughs> Favorite first date, anything but whale watching. This is the most likely profile of who? Jonah, Joash, Joab, or Job? Benjamin. Jonah, for sure. We're gonna say Jonah. Jonah is absolutely right for 10 points. <laughs> That's what it looked like. Good start. All right, take a look at the board. Here is our next profile. Distinguishing feature, my natural red hair. A little about me. I am hairy. I was even a hairy baby. I'm just saying this up front so you won't be surprised if we meet. <laughs> what you might not know about me, I'm a twin. Most private thing I'm willing to admit, my brother outsmarts me every time. This is most likely whose profile? Thomas, Jacob, Esau, or Ephraim? Cindy. Esau? Esau. Yes, Esau. Esau. Esau is exactly right. Good job. <laughs> Girls of Grace are on the board. Take a look. Here is our final profile. Profession, queen, drama queen, people say, LOL. Turnoffs. Prophets who insult your idols and are hard to kill. <laughs> Philosophy, always look attractive, even if someone is coming to assassinate <laughs> you. Deal breakers, I hate dogs, even though they eat me up. This is most likely whose profile? Rahab, Tamar, Sapphira, or Jezebel? Mike. We're gonna go with Jezebel. Jezebel is absolutely right, very good. <laughs> It doesn't happen very often. We've got a three-way tie at 10. Nice going, everybody. All right, right now I'm going to give you guys a chance to pick up 25 additional points. And you won't be using your buzzer for this one. We ask 100 Uversion app users, that's the online Bible, the following question. Do you believe there were dinosaurs on the ark? Now, what percentage believed that there were dinosaurs on the ark? Was it 
87%, or 27%. You pick the right one, you'll get 25 more points. So teams, talk it over. While you talk it over together at home, ladies and gentlemen, Kurt Franklin and the American Bible Challenge Choir. <laughs> Bible, the following question. Do you believe there were dinosaurs on the ark? What percentage believed that there were dinosaurs on the ark? Was it 87%, 47%, or 27%? Kirk, what do you think the answer is? You know, Jeff, I think the 87%. If there were. I'd hate to be in charge of all that because you'd be walking around going, where's the other goat? <laughs> we had two goats. Where's the other goat? <laughs> yeah. All right, during the break, each team wrote their answer choice on their individual tablets. Guys, if you pick the right percentage, you'll get 25 additional points. So let's take a look at what you picked. 27%, 47%, first in faith, why 27%? We felt like most people when asked would think about the large dinosaurs that couldn't fit on the boat, and that therefore they probably say 27%. Most people wouldn't think they would fit on the boat. Okay, yeah, that's a lot of room on a boat. Well, let's see what the correct answer is. According to 100 Uversion app users, the correct answer is 27%. Good job. Still plenty of time for our scores to change, though, because it is now time to get you out from behind those podiums and to do a little something physical. So the game we have for you today is called Thou Shalt Not Exhale. <laughs> In this game, all of our teams will play at the same time. And here's how it works. Each team has a table of cards representing four possible answers. I'll read a fact about one of them, and you've got to use a straw to pick up the card you want, hurry over, and place it onto your pedestal. You can't touch the cards with your hands, and if it drops to the floor, go get another one and keep trying. The first player to get the right card onto your pedestal wins that turn. And then I'll ask another question for the next set of players and so on. You will have 90 seconds. The team gets the most correct cards in their tray will earn 50 points, all right? So here are your four choices. These are facts about Martha from the New Testament. Miriam, who's in Exodus, Sarah, who's prominent in Genesis, or Snooky from MTV's Jersey Shore. So let's put 90 seconds on the clock. Everybody get set. Here is your first fact. Serve dinner to Jesus at Bethany. Martha, 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 Martha. All the teams are going for Martha. You got it, you got it. First in faith is out in front. Yes, Martha. Next question. Serve dinner to Paul in Jersey. Jersey. Snooky. They're all going for Snooky. And again, first in faith is first off the line. There you go, there you go. Yes, Snooky. Next question. Sister of Aaron. Looks like redeemed rednecks and girls of grace are going for Miriam. And first in faith chose Sarah. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Sarah is wrong. You're right, you're right, you're right. The redeemed rednecks are having a hard time holding on to their cards. You got time, you got time. First in faith is back with Miriam, but is it right? Yes, Miriam. Next question. Gave birth to baby Lorenzo. They all grab Snooky, and it is a race. First in faith gets there first. Yes, Snooky. Next question. Her husband had a baby with their servant. Sarah. 
The redeemed rednecks are trying to make a quick break with Sarah, but it's first and faith again. Yes, Sarah. Next question. Nickname the meatball. <laughs> Everybody's going for Snooky. Oh, first and faith dropped it. Redeemed rednecks dropped it. Girls with great deal struggling. First and faith has Snooky again. Yes, Snooky. Next question. Sister's name is Mary. Margaret. Oh, time's up. Wow. <laughs> that was a great job. All right, everybody, go back to your podium. That was Cleveland Browns' domination well, there, man. Hey, are we trying to dominate something? Man? That was awesome. You got the most correct answers with six. Great job. Way to go. All right, let's recap our scores right now. Girls of Grace have 10, Redeem Rednecks 35, and First and Faith is in the lead with 85 points. Nice going, guys. When we come back, the questions get harder and just two of you will play on each team, plus even crazier court cases than you'll find on Judge Judy. Proverbs 17 says, better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than... Oh, and scorned? I don't know. It's obvious to me, all of you know a lot about the Bible, but I'm thinking on every team, there's got to be one person that knows a little bit more than somebody else. So on your team, who would that be? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to take a step back, but do not get too comfortable because you're going to have to come back by yourself later on when the questions get harder and there's even more pressure. So Elizabeth, if you would, take a step back right now. All right, ladies. This time, our category is called Manna on the Street. <laughs> you ever wonder just how well average folks know their Bible? Well, here's your chance. Let me show you what happened when I was in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago and asked the question, better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than what? Take a look. Proverbs 17. Uh-oh. Better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than... A bear with too many. Yeah, because you know she's going to be in a bad mood. <laughs> Better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than... A woman scorned? The wrath of God. Oh, golly. Get hit by a bus. I have no earthly idea. Don't know. Mm. I'm not guessing. <laughs> You're supposed to know that one. I didn't have any bears. <laughs> you only had girls, didn't you? Okay. Yes. This one was actually to separate a fool from his folly. <laughs> I hope all of you knew the answer to that proverb because it is now time to ask each team a question about other proverbs. Correct answers are going to be worth 50 points. Just give us the word or the phrase that completes each one. Could be a word, could be a phrase, all right? Here is your first question. Drink water from your own cistern. Running water from your own blank. Um, I believe it's well. What do you think? Yes. You think it's well? Yeah. It's okay. Well. All right, final answer, well. Final answer, different show, but we'll take well. That is the right answer. <laughs> It's about being faithful to your wife. A lot of politicians could have lengthened their career by reading that proverb <laughs> right there. <laughs> All right, First in Faith. All right. Who is the Bible wizard on this team? Our expert is Robert. Mr. Robert. Yeah, if the chaplain's not, you got to start worrying. All right, Robert, take a step back. We'll see you in a little bit. Now, remember, guys, we're looking for the word or phrase that completes the proverb, OK? Take a look at the board. The glory of young men is their strength. 
blank the splendor of the old. Proverbs 20, 29. Wisdom. Proverbs is about wisdom. Gray hair. And gray hair? Wisdom. Wisdom? Let's go wisdom. All right, we're going to go with the wisdom. We're going to go right. with wisdom. You know fact. what's interesting for me is I'm hearing you talk it out. Somebody said gray hair, right? They sure did. Actually, it's not wisdom. It is gray hair, the splendor Listen of the old. Listen to yourself, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Redeem Rednecks. Who's going to be playing, and who is the Bible expert that's going to sit this round out? I'm going to step back. Mike? The maestro. Mike's going to step back. All right. <laughs> See you in a little bit, Mike. All right, Jeremiah and Rachel, take a look at the board. If you find blank, eat just enough. Too much of it, and you will vomit. Proverbs 25, 16. I don't think it's candy. Right. <laughs> it's got to be something like bread. Or manna. That wouldn't be there. I'm thinking bread. All right, bread. bread. I'm going to say bread. Looking back at well, Mike, what do you think, Mike? <laughs> honey. We left. You think honey? <gasps> That's what it is. Ooh. <laughs> it could be my Uncle Ray Ray's pork rinds. I don't think that's an option, but <laughs> guarantee that'll work. Actually, Mike is correct. Oh. It is not bread, it is honey. <gasps> honey. So, I'm not going to give you any rest before we play the next game. This one is called Chosen People's Court. Now, in this game, we imagine fictional situations that a biblical judge might have had to rule on. Your job is to deliver the appropriate ruling based on biblical law. Now, each team gets their own court case, and correct answers are worth 50 points. All right, you ready? Ready. Here's your case. The case of the sheepish chef. <laughs> the plaintiff, a Benjamite shepherd. The defendant, a starving sheep stealer. The case, the Benjamite caught the thief eating one of his stolen sheep. All right, according to Exodus 22.1, how should the thief be punished? The thief must apologize, the thief must give the shepherd four sheep, or the thief must become the shepherd's slave. I remember something about they must restore some fold. Yes. I was thinking tenfold, but apparently it's not tenfold. I was thinking that there would also be some type of reciprocation too. I mean, it is Exodus. They wouldn't become the slave, and the apology doesn't mean much. Mm -hmm. So let's set the middle one. OK. OK, middle one. The thief must give the shepherd four sheep. The thief must give the shepherd four sheep. Oh, Cindy. That's the right answer. Woo! The thief must give the shepherd four sheep. Good job. 50 points. All right, guys, you ready for your court case? Yes, sir. Right. Here we go. The case of the nickel knickknacks. The plaintiff, a jeweler who asked her neighbor to keep her knickknack collection safe. The defendant, the inattentive neighbor. The case, a jeweler's knickknacks were stolen while her neighbor was supposed to be watching them. They later caught the thief. According to Exodus 22:7, how should the jeweler get biblical justice? The thief should pay back double. The neighbor and the thief should be stoned to death. Or since the thief was caught, no harm, no foul. I don't think that's a stonable offense, do you? No, I don't. And they got to pay back. It's got to be a punishment. For sure. Pay back, pay back double. Pay back double. You're gonna go with the thief should pay back double. You're gonna go with the thief should pay back double. Yes, sir. That is absolutely right. Fifty more points. Good job, guys. Bye bye. <laughs> Have some smart people today. And I'm thinking the Redeem Rednecks are going, why didn't we get the sheep question? Right? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Are yeah. right, you ready for your court case? Take a look. The case of the climbing klutz. The plaintiff, the grieving parents of a young woman. The defendant, an annoyed neighbor who is countersuing. The case, the young woman sneaked out at night and climbed her neighbor's new building. Then she tripped and fell to her death. According to Deuteronomy 22.8, who would be responsible? The parents for letting their daughter out at night, the young woman for climbing a building, the neighbor for not building a safety parapet. Well, 
I'm, I'm thinking not. Thinking? The, I'm thinking not the parents that didn't jump out. Did that jump out at you? No, and actually, I was leaning toward the young woman for climbing a building. Yeah, honestly, C looks like a good answer too. You want to go with the young woman? Yeah, that was just my first instinct. Okay. We'll go with the young woman. I'm gonna go with the young woman for climbing a building. Mike? I, I don't want to even look. I would have gone with C, but I don't know. You would have gone with C. So interesting, you were split between the two because the correct answer is actually C. It says, when you build a new house, make a parapet around your roof so that you may not bring the guilt of bloodshed on your house if somebody falls. All right. Oh, well. Let's take a look at the scores. Redeem Rednecks, 35. Girls of Grace, 110. First in Faith, 135. All right. So let's switch it up, everybody. Coming up, the toughest questions yet, and at the end of it, one team will be gone. The question is, who's moving on to our final revelation round and the chance to win $20,000 for their charity? The answer, when we come back. All right, Kirk. The two highest scoring teams will compete in the final revelation. One team will walk away with $5,000 for their charity. The other team will leave here with $20,000 and a shot at $100,000 in the American Bible Challenge grand finale. And it all comes down to something we call the chosen three. I'm going to ask each player one question, but here's the thing. That question has three correct answers. Each right answer you give me will be worth 100 points. Give me three correct answers. You'll have a total of 300 points. First in faith, we're going to start with you. Right now, you are in the lead. So if you get all three of these answers right, you are guaranteed a spot in the final revelation, OK? You ready, Robert? Here comes your question. According to Genesis, which three of these are rivers that flow out of Eden? Gihon, Kishon, Euphrates, Jordan, Shinor, or Kishon? Wow, so all three that flow out of Eden. Um, okay, I think my first choice will be the Jordan. My second would be the Euphrates. And my th third would be Gihon. Gihon. OK. Mm. So I told you, if you get all three right, yeah. you guarantee yourself a place in the final revelation. Let's take a look at the board. Does Robert have one right? <laughs> Euphrates. Oh, boy, Robert. Got to have one before you can get three, right? Woo. Does Robert have two right? Get another one. Get another one. Yes, sir. yes, he does. This was the one you were so sure about. Your first answer. If this one's right, you are a lock. Does Robert have three right answers? You get that one. Oh. Uh, all right, we'll take two. Two, that's good. Oh, two out of three is good. What, what would be your next choice? Pishon. Pishon is actually the correct one. It, it is. Gihon, Pishon, and Euphrates. Good job. Two out of three. Nice work. Good job, Robert. Um, now we go to the Redeem Rednecks. Here's the deal, Mike. You got to get at least one to stay in the game, OK? Two would be better. Three would be good. Three would be good, but at least one or you'll be going home. So take a look at the board. Here's your question. Which three of these New Testament books consist of only three chapters? Philippians, 1 John, James 
2 Thessalonians, Titus, or 2 Peter? As my first answer, 2 Peter. And I think Titus and 2 Thessalonians. 2 Peter, Titus, and 2 Thessalonians. Told you you had to have one right answer to stay in the game. Does Mike have one right answer? Yes, he does. <laughs> Told you two would be better. Does Mike have two it. right answers? You got it. You got it. You got it. Does Mike have three right answers? Wow! Great job, Mike. Great job. All right, girls of grace, it is up to you. You have to have all three right to guarantee yourself a spot in the final revelation. And if you get all three right, then we will have a tie for second between Redeemed Rednecks and First and Faith, and they'll have to go through a tiebreaker. All right, Elizabeth, here is your question. According to the Gospels, which three of these things did Jesus do after the resurrection? Met disciples on a mountain, pretended to garden, talked to Cleopas, ate fish, healed the sick, visited synagogues. Okay, I know for sure that he ate fish. He talked to Cleopas, it was him and another guy, they were on a road and they didn't recognize him. Let's see about the third one. He didn't pretend to guard. So I'm gonna go with talk to Cleopas, ate fish, and met disciples on a mountain. Okay. How are you feeling? Confident in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what a great answer. All right, I told you, you had to answer all three right to make it to the final revelation. Does Elizabeth have one right answer? Yes, she does. Does Elizabeth have two right answers? Yes, she does. Does Elizabeth have three right answers? You are going on to the final revelation. But for second place, we have a tie. So here is what we're going to do. Mike and Robert, I'm going to ask you to pick up your buzzers. You got it, bud. We are going to ask you one buzz-in question. If you get the question correct, you win, and your team will move on to the final revelation. If you answer incorrectly, the other team wins and moves on. You can ring in at any time. You do not have to wait for me to finish the question. Here is the question. What is the name of the garden where Jesus prayed before his arrest? Robert? Gethsemane. Gethsemane is absolutely correct. Congratulations, you are going on to the final revelation round. Good job, Good job. Good job. Everybody, what a great game. Redeem Rennish. Man, that was so close. And I love what you are doing in your community. We're not letting you leave empty-handed. $2,500 for your ministry. Thank you for being here. God bless you in what you do. Keep loving on folks. Thanks, y'all. All right. All right, First in Faith and Girls of Grace, it is down to you too. Now, in the final revelation today, we are going to ask you questions about this category. Children of the Bible, and you can bet there are going to be some tough questions, so I am going to give you 10 minutes for some good old-fashioned Bible study, all right? Thank Here you. are your Bibles. 
You'll go to our backstage study rooms to prepare, and when you get there, you're going to find a tablet loaded with version, the electronic Bible, and you're welcome to use that. Good luck. Off you go. Coming up next, two teams, $20,000, and an intense Fast Master class on Children of the Bible. The American Bible Challenge will be right back. Choir, take it away. First in Faith or Girls of Grace will be going home tonight with $20,000 for their charity. So they're both backstage now frantically studying up on children of the Bible. Use the blue marker for Old Testament. Okay. Red it. marker for New Testament. I'm going to go to Matthew. Okay. This is Benjamin, Joseph. The obvious ones, Cain and Abel, right? And then Seth afterwards. Yes. And we know that Adam and Eve also have, have four, 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 more than four, four children, other children. children. Put Moses up there. Yes. Maybe, you know, he was in the basket. He said children of the Bible. Kind of makes me think he's one of the most specific names. Jacob laid hands on Joseph's kids. He switched yeah, around. Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim and Manasseh. Um, Manasseh's older. So. Manasseh's older. And, but Ephraim got the blessing. Got the first blessing. Uh, David has, had a son with Bathsheba. Bathsheba. Nathan confronted him about that. So there were daughters that also, like, they were asking for an inheritance. And that was really specific, too. First of faith on three. One, two, three. First, First three. Let's get it. The plan is just answer it right and um, smile and keep rejoicing. Yay. Let's see what our teams learned about children of the Bible. First in faith, get on out here. Yay. Welcome back, guys. Thank hey. you. That was study time. Fun. Good. Good. Hope we studied the right stuff. Yeah, <laughs> let's hope so. Are you ready for this? We're ready. Let me tell you how Final Revelation works. You will have one minute to answer as many questions as you can on children of the Bible. I will ask each of you a question one at a time. First you, then you, then you. We will go in order until we run out of time. If you do not know the answer, you can say pass, and I will move on to the next player. Now, the team with the most correct answers wins. All right. Good luck. Can you dim the lights, please? All right, let's put 60 seconds up there. It is children of the Bible. Let's start the clock. Name the child who floated in a basket down the Nile. Moses. Correct. According to Genesis 37, which son did Jacob love more than any of his other sons? Joseph. Correct. In the Bible, who was the first child born by man and woman? Uh, um... Pass. What king settled a disagreement between two mothers arguing over a child? David. Incorrect. David mourned the death of his young child born to which wife? Bathsheba. Correct. Who was the only New Testament mother to have a baby in her old age? Elizabeth. Correct. Which book of the Bible includes the phrase, a little child will lead them? Uh, Matthew. Incorrect. Who raised a little girl from death by saying, Talifa Kuhn? Jesus. Correct. In what book of the Bible does a dragon threaten a woman with child? Revelation. Correct. Good job, guys. You got six right answers there. Let's go back. You're going to kick yourself over this one, Robert. In the Bible, who was the first child born by man and woman? It was Cain. Cain. It was Cain. Cain. What king settled a disagreement between two mothers arguing over a child? That was Solomon. Mm. And which book of the Bible includes the phrase, a little child will lead them? That is Isaiah. Okay, but very good. Six is a good. The other team's got to get seven to win. How you feeling about six? Confident? Nervous? Don't know yet. <laughs> as, long as, as long as we get more. As long as you get more, it doesn't we matter. We can win with two if they get one. <laughs> All right, well, let's bring Girls of Grace out now. 
Welcome back, ladies. Woo. How was your study time? It was good. Productive? All right. Well, let me tell you this. First and Faith got six correct answers. Can they pull it off? That's the $20,000 question right after this. One minute, one team is walking out of here with $20,000 for their charity. <laughs> Girls of Grace, are you ready for this? <laughs> All right, your opponents, First and Faith, got six questions right, so you're going to need seven to win. You will have the same exact questions and the same time on the clock. First and Faith, if you will do me a favor and stand over there. Ladies, good luck. Let's dim the lights, please. Put 60 seconds up there. Start the clock. Name the child who floated in a basket down the Nile. Moses. Correct. According to Genesis 37, which son did Jacob love more than any of his other sons? Joseph. Correct. In the Bible, who was the first child born by man and woman? Cain. Correct. What king settled a disagreement between two mothers? Solomon. Correct. David mourned the death of his young child born to which wife? Bathsheba. Correct. Who was the only New Testament mother to have a baby in her old age? Sarah. Incorrect. Which book of the Bible includes the phrase, a little child will lead them? Pass. Who raised a little girl from death by saying, Talitha Kuhn? Jesus. Correct. In what book of the Bible does a dragon threaten a woman with child? Revelation. Correct. That's seven. <laughs> Finals to play against the winners of other twos and a chance at a prize of one hundred thousand dollars for your charity. taking us into your homes and into your hearts. And please give a warm American Bible Challenge shout out to Mr. Kirk Franklin. So great to have you here, man. But right now we have three teams, including a kidney donor, a truck driver, and a team of National Bible Quiz Bowl winners to go head to head in a lively contest of faith, fun, and facts to win cash for their favorite charities and a chance to come back and play for $100,000 in the American Bible Challenge Grand Finale. Let's meet our first team. I'm Lavelle. I'm Ron. And I'm Jimmy. And we are the men of the Motor City. This is our town. This is our city. And we are taking on this American Bible Challenge to bring Detroit back to its glory day. Yes. The city, uh, once upon a time, it was such a vibrant city. I mean, they downsized the automotive industry. A lot of people, when they lost their job, they move out of the city and just bring on decay. Our church, Trinity Delivered Church, does a lot of things for our neighborhood. Always been a place where people can come and receive help. And that's what we want to do. We want to continue to be a part of this community. The church uh, purchased these buildings behind me with the intention of turning them into a community center. The place once was beautiful, but the vandals came in and just destroyed the interior of the building. This is what we're left with, but we won't be deterred. We have the tenacity to want to rebuild and see this vibrant again. Men of the Motor City, yeah. From Detroit, Michigan, this is the Men of Motor City, Lavelle, Jimmy, and Ron. Welcome to the show, guys. Nice to have you here. Good to be here, Jeff. And I, I love what you're doing, because I tell everybody, you should love where you're from. Yes. I told somebody in watching your story, I said, these guys are like missionaries that don't go overseas. They're, they're, they're missionaries right there in their yes. community. Yes. And that's what you guys are doing, man. That is so cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck today, guys. You. I hope you win a lot of money Thank for your charity. You. Now, we got some people you're going to be playing against, so let's meet them now. 
took a beating. He's only one man. Ah. My name is Joshua Wagner from the team Wagner Warriors. Woo! We grew up as pastors, kids living in the church, hanging out at church. Growing up in a house full of boys, everything was always a competition. Bring it on, princess. We are really close, absolutely best friends. We love competing. Who was Abraham's wife? Sarah, Sarah. Bible Quiz is an organization for 6th through 12th graders, and you compete all over the nation. We have won the national championship four of the last five years. We're playing for One Nation One Day. We reach out to the most unreached areas of the world, and we get to feed them, we get to, we get to give them clothes, and it's an amazing opportunity to be able to share the love of Christ with these people. From Tulsa, Oklahoma, let's hear it for Jesse, Josh, and Daniel. Yeah. Come on. It, it's amazing what you guys, I mean, you, you travel all over the world, uh, feeding people, giving kids toys, and you're like Santa Claus, but you're every day. Yeah, every single <laughs> day. You. Congratulations, Thank it's you. awesome work that you're doing. Good luck here today. Thank you. Hope you get you some cash. Let's meet our final team. I'm Kelly Zarang, and my teammates are my husband, JR, and my son, Renee. We really try to instill in our children to take risks and follow their dreams, and we try to lead by example. My husband took a really big risk when he gave up his computer programming job to open a cheerleading gym and do what he wanted to do. One, two, down, up. All right. <laughs> because of him following that dream, I ended up being able to take the biggest risk of my life. JR had a retreat for our new employees, and Matt was one of those new employees. I noticed that there was something wrong with Matt's arm. I asked my husband about it, and he let me know he was on dialysis and he needed a kidney, and that no one in his family was a match. I told my husband I knew that I was going to donate a kidney to Matt. I was floored. I started getting tested, and every test came back that we were a perfect match. On November 11th of 2010, I gave Matt my kidney, now he'll live as long as anyone. That's why we're playing for the Living Donor Assistance Center. We're Hello, Hello Kidney from Gadsden, Alabama. <laughs> Talk about a match from Gadsden, Alabama. Give it up for Hello Kidney, J.R. Kelly and Renee. <laughs> what a story. I'm watching that thing, and you know, I feel good about myself when I give a dollar to a homeless person at a corner. <laughs> And you give away a kidney. Now, now, when you do that, do you kind of have the attitude, hey, you know my car needs washing, or, uh... Actually, I'm, I'm thinking about asking him for grandchildren, because this one is not giving me any yet. So... You're not cooperating? No. I guess it's for this. No. Oh. Well, good luck today. We hope Thanks. you take home a lot of cash. All right, you guys ready to play this game? Yeah. Let's do this thing. Here's how it works. You'll start off playing as teams of three, but as the game goes on, you're gonna go down to two, and then just one. At the end, the top two teams are gonna go head to head, and one of those teams will be leaving here tonight with $20,000 and a shot at $100,000. Let's play the American Bible Challenge. All right, you're gonna love this first game. It is called, You Don't Know Me From Adam. <laughs> Now, in just a minute, you're going to meet a series of biblical characters who will personally give us several clues as to who they are. Once you think you have ID'd the character, hit your buzzer. If you're right, your team gets 10 points. If you're wrong, you're going to lose 10 points. All right, we're ready? Hello, sir. How are you doing? Oh, hello, Jeff. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you. All right, let's uh, find out a little bit about our first guest. It's no lavender soap but I find broken pottery very soothing. Ron. Job. Job is absolutely right. It is Job. Yeah. Woo! Men of Motor City, 10 points. All right, let's All go right. to the next character. Oh, wow, <laughs> Miss, how are you tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we just hurry this along, please? <laughs> Is it me or does she have a little bit of a five o'clock shadow? Uh, uh, all right, miss, can we learn a little bit about you? I'm the great great grandmother of Mahalalel. He never calls, he never writes. <laughs> Just like Indiana Jones, I don't like serpents. Lavelle. I would have to think that it's Eve. 
Eve? Eve is absolutely right. It is Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Let's meet our next guest. Hey, hello, sir. How are you? Oh, hi, Jeff. How are you? <laughs> I am doing just great. So can we learn a little bit about you? My dad was the big kahuna, the head honcho, El Jefe. <laughs> I would totally clean up at Trivial Pursuit. Renee. Solomon. Solomon is absolutely right. It is Yay! Solomon. Yay! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to give you a chance to pick up 25 additional points, and you won't be using your buzzer for this one. We ask 100 Uversion app users the following question. If you had to choose from these three names, which of these would you name your son? Mephibosheth, <laughs> Zerubbabel, <laughs> or Nimrod? Oh, man. You pick the right one, you're going to get 25 additional points. So teams, talk it over amongst yourselves while you talk it over mm. at home. <laughs> We're back with more of the American Bible Challenge. Now, we asked 100 Uversion app users, which is the online Bible, the following question. If you had to choose from these three names, which one of these would you name your son? Mephibosheth, Zerubbabel, or Nimrod? Now, Kirk, you've got children, right? Yes, sir. In naming your children, did any of these possibilities come up? <laughs> Not in my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a son that every now and then, that bottom one, he kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and I'm sitting there thinking, what bizarre names, and then I'm thinking, I'm from Georgia. I have an uncle named Catfish. I mean, how can, <laughs> how can I make fun of Mephibosheth? Now, teams, if you pick the most popular answer, you'll get 25 points. So let's take a look at what you picked. Men of Motor City said Nimrod. And Wagner Warrior, you went with Zerubbabel. Hello, Kidney, you went with the same thing. Why? Well, I thought that Mephibosheth would be too hard to spell. But you didn't think Zerubbabel would be <laughs> well... too hard to spell? <laughs> Actually, the most popular answer, according to 100 Uversion app users, was Zerubbabel. So both teams get 25 additional points. All right, there's still lots of time to change the scores because now it's time to get you out from behind those podiums and do a little bit of something physical. It's a game we like to call a drop in the bucket. Take a look. Here's what you're going to do. You'll have three buckets representing three possible answers. When the clock starts, I'll read a fact about one of them. The first player will head to the table with the answer you think is right and try to bounce a ping pong ball into that bucket. Keep trying until you get one in. And then I'll read another fact to the next player and so on. The team with the most correct answers after 60 seconds gets 50 points. All right, everybody? Oh, yeah. Right. All right, we're going to play this game one team at a time. Hello, Kidney. You were drawn at random to start off, so if you'll come up to the line. The other two teams, can you step backstage for a second? We'll see those guys in just a minute. All right, Hello, Kidney. Here are your options. Hannah. Manna. Or Hannah Montana. <laughs> All right, here is your first fact. Gave birth to Samuel. Oh, Hannah. Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. You got it. You got your time. Put it in there. Take your time. Go easy. Oh, you go a little bounce. Easy. A little yep. There you go. Oh, a little bit harder. Oh! Yeah. Next fact. Daughter of Robbie Ray. Uh, Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. I think. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's it was a little, little hard. There you go. A little softer. A little got softer. it. You got it, Jeff. Yep. Easy, babe. Yep. A little more. A right. little more. A little more. A little closer. A little closer. A little bit more. You got little it. Closer. You can do it. There you go. Come on. Almost. A little, little bit. Yep. Keep right it right there. You'll get it. Keep it right there. You'll get it. Easy. Yeah. Oh. Good job. Okay. Tastes like wafers made with honey. Okay. Get your mana. You got, got it. it. Nice and easy, easy buddy. Renee. Bounce is big, Renee. A little easy. Bounce is big. Bounce. There you go. There you go. Okay. Known for saying, my mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. Hannah. Hannah. Hannah, Hannah. Oh, there you go. Hey, good, good. Whoa. Nice and easy. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great job, Hello Kitty. Four correct answers. Yeah. All right, if you guys will go back to your podium, and we'll bring the Wagner Warriors out now. Come on.
All right, guys, let me tell you, Hello Kitten, you got four correct okay. answers. Okay. So okay. that Good is job. the number to beat. Okay. Your options are going to be Jonah, Samson, or Homer Simpson. <laughs> Here is your first fact. Told a woman, no razor has ever been used on my head. Soft, softer, soft, John. Oh. Okay, 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 Josh, Josh. Yeah. As the sun blazed on his head, he said, it is better for me to die than to live. Jonah, Jonah, yes. Okay, Josh, you got it. Go ahead, Own go. it, just a little softer. Come on, buddy, go, go. here we go, okay. Son of Abraham. Okay, uh, 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 Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. In Judges 16, encounter trouble in the city of oh. Gaza. Samson. Samson, Samson. Good. In season six, encounter trouble in the city of Shelbyville. Shel yeah, Josh, come on, you got it. Light. Lighter, lighter, lighter. You got it. Lighter, lighter. You got it, Josh, you got it. Let's go, let's go. Son of Amatai. Amatai, Jonah. Uh, uh, Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. Uh, light, lighter, light, lighter. Light. It's all right. You're doing great, Daniel. You're doing great. You got it. You got it. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, my gosh. Daniel, the last one right off the rim there. I know. You All right, know. you had four correct answers. Okay. Five in the bowl, but the son of Abraham, believe it or not, was Homer, Homer Simpson. I should have yes. that. His, his I father's name was that. Abe Simpson. All right, so All right. we have a tie right now with Hello Kidney. Both teams have four points. All right, guys, you can go back to your podium. Men of Motor City, come on out. All right, guys. Both of the other teams had four points. So if you want the 50 points, you have to get at least four. If you want them all to yourself, you have to get five correct answers, all right? All right. Here are your choices today. Apostle, epistle, or opossum. <laughs> These facts are either going to be about the 12 apostles, the epistles found in the New Testament, or opossums found in rednecks' backyards, all right? <laughs> all right, gentlemen, here is your first fact. Philip. Oh. Philip. Awesome. Go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah, okay. a little softer, a little softer. Soft. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the message. Right in the middle. Ah. Back it up, back. 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 back in the middle. Right in the middle, right that's in the middle. It. That's oh. it. Come on, Jimmy, come on, come on. Uh, yeah. ah, it's like on. watching a Pistons game. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. Titus. Titus was an epistle, right? Epistle. Oh! Ah! Prehensile tail. Has a prehensile tail. That's a possum. Get it around. Get it around. Get it around. Come on, Rob. All right. Bless there you go. There you go. Uh, oh. A little softer, Rob. A little, a little softer. Back. Ah, hey. to your... Oh. Look to your right, Rob. Right <laughs> that... Oh. That's it, got it. You got it. Come on now. It's not prayer. You can open your eyes. <laughs> Come on, Rob. Oh. Come on, Rob. You can do it now. Oh. It is a possum that has a prehensile tail. All right. Hello, Kidney Wagner Warriors. Congratulations. You both earned 50 points in that round. <laughs> Things are really going to heat up when we come back. Our questions are going to get tougher. Each team goes from three players until two. More of the American Bible Challenge is just ahead. Kidney, such a fascinating story. How does one come about donating a kidney, not to a family member or a relative, but to a stranger? How does that happen? Well, with me, I met Matt, and on the night that I met him, I just felt it in my heart that I would match. I learned no one in his family matched, and we were, were driving home after meeting him, and I told JR, I said, I think I match, and I'm going to give him my kidney. And it started from there. But the fact that you matched, I mean, that's a little bit of a miracle in itself, it, isn't it? It was, yes. And yeah, that's so awesome. awesome. That is such a great story. Kelly, Kelly, come here just a minute. Okay. Come over here. Now, Matt actually sent you a message, okay? Okay. All right. So, 
you know what? I'm just going to let him tell you in person. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello no to way. Matt McCollum. <laughs> Matt? Matt, come on out here. <laughs> How awesome is that? Awesome. I told her up front, you had a message you wanted to send her, but I, I mean, I'll just let you give her the message in person. Sure, yeah. I, I just wanted to come out and support you because you had supported me through the hardest time of my life. And um, I also wanted to come in here to let you know that uh, my beautiful wife is three months pregnant. Ah, oh, I'm gonna be a <laughs> <laughs> And she's actually here in the audience here. Where? Where? Congratulations. How about that? Congratulations so to you. Thank you sir. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm thrilled. <laughs> All right, well, Matt is gonna cheer you on the rest of the way. Go take a seat next to your beautiful wife. How about that, huh? That was so nice. <laughs> All right. Well, it's pretty obvious to me that all of you know a lot about the Bible, but I'm thinking on each team there's got to be one person that knows more about it than anybody else. So uh, on this, oh, it's going to be Ron. No, no, not Ron. even a doubt. No doubt. No okay. Doubt. All right. Well, this person is going to be sitting out this round, okay? So, Ron, if you will step back to this podium right here. Now, gentlemen. This time, our category is a six-pack of abs. Now, in this round, the answers to all of the questions will involve the word ab, okay? Right. Take a look. Joab, Moab, Abinadab, Absalom, Abijah, and Abishag. So, all right, gentlemen, here is your question. Which ab was a chip off the old lot? Mm, if I had to guess, I would, I would, I'm going to have to go with Ab Abijah. I like a better dad, but I'll go with you. Uh... Okay, let's go with Abijah. Abijah. Yes, sir. Oh, man, you almost said Abinadab, ah. which wouldn't be right. <laughs> But neither is Abijah. Uh. <laughs> Actually, the correct answer is Moab. 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 All right. <laughs> Who's the Bible expert out of the brothers? Gonna be Josh? Josh. All right, Josh. Josh, take a step back there. there we go. Here we go. Woo. All right, guys, here is your question. In 1 Kings 15, which Ab was an absolutely horrible king? Abijah. It was Abijah. He's in the royal line. He's in Matthew 1, 7. That's Solomon, right. the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. You're going with Abijah? Abijah. That's a good call. The correct answer is, in fact, yes. Abijah. Yeah. 50 points. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you see how this is played. Who is the Bible wizard? Renee. Renee. All right, take a step back to the podium, Renee. Fifty points would be nice, wouldn't it? Good. All right, here is your question. Which Ab took revenge on Abner for killing his brother? Okay. Um, Joe, Joab. We'll say Joab. Joab. Yes. You're just gonna let her make yep, that call. She knows it. All right, let me I check with a family Bible expert. Renee, do you think that's the right answer? I uh, feel pretty good about Joab. Feel pretty good about Joab? I don't know if I do. Well, you should, because it's the right answer. It is Joanne. Congratulations. Good work. All right, everybody. It's now time to play one of my favorite games on this show. It's called Kids Sayeth the Cutest Things. Oh, right. Take a look at six-year-old Eva, who's going to give us her version of the biblical story of Joseph. He gave Joseph a big rainbow coat and his brothers did not like it they were like man he gets this coat and i don't like it i think we should get a plan for joseph so they put him in a well and he was like god please 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 get a plan for me even when you feel like you're in a well god has a plan for you that is better than being in a well is being is being in a well, and that's even better than being in hell. How cute 
is that? That's sweet. That's awesome. I love it. So now I'm going to ask each team a question about Joseph, okay? Correct okay. answers are worth 50 points. Here is your question. Which two brothers spoke up and tried to keep their other brothers from killing Joseph? You got two brothers that don't want to kill him. I wish my family was right. that supportive. <laughs> uh, thinking Reuben. That sounds good. Thinking Reuben, Reuben was one. Reuben and Naphtali. So like. Reuben and Naphtali. Reuben and Naphtali. Reuben is correct. Okay. Naphtali is not. Oh. It's Reuben and Judah. Judah. Oh. And Judah were the two brothers that did not want to kill Joseph. Okay. All right, guys. How do we feel about the story of Joseph? I like the story of Joseph. You like the story of Joseph? It's good. All right, you ready for your question? Bring yes. it on. According to Genesis 37, 19, what nickname did the brothers call Joseph? Dreamer. They called him the Dreamer. That's true. But I, but I think because this, I think that's, that's, gonna be the, that's gonna be at the start. I think that's thirty. That's gonna be at the start of the story of yeah, Joseph. Yeah, you're right. Which you're is right. when they when they called him Dreamer. You're because right. He had all his dreams. And yeah. Him and that's when they saw him. Him. That's when they so, that's when they put that's him in the pit. Exactly. We're gonna go with Dreamer. Dreamer. Yes. Is absolutely right. It yeah! is. Dreamer. Yeah! Good job, guys. Mm, come on. Okay. Ready for your question? Yes. Joseph was sold to Potiphar. What was Potiphar's rank in Pharaoh's um, He could be a general. Um, he could be a sergeant. I don't I think know. They're looking sergeant, general. Potiphar's rank. A general. General? Actually, the rank is. Captain. Captain in Captain. Pharaoh's army, that's it. We would have accepted chief executioner yes. as well. Uh, yeah. All right, well, let's switch it up, guys. In just a minute, one of our teams will be eliminated. Only two of them can go on to our final revelation round for a shot at $20,000 for their charity. Who's going to hang on? We'll find out right after this. Kirk, take us to the break. We have come down to the critical crunch at the end of this round. Only our top two teams will advance to the final revelation. It all comes down to something we call the chosen three. I'm going to ask each player one question, but here's the thing. It's got three correct answers, okay? Each answer you give me that's right is worth 100 points. Give me all three correct, you get 300 points. All right, Wagner Warriors, we're going to start with you. You're in first place. You give me three correct answers, you guarantee yourself a spot in the final revelation, okay. okay? Here is your question. Jesus was brought to Pontius Pilate in John 18 and Luke 23. Which three of these were other leaders Jesus faced as part of his trial? Josephus, Annas, Simeon, Caiaphas, Herod, or Augustus? I know it wasn't Augustus. He was Caesar at, time, at that time, so I'm eliminating him. Josephus, uh, as I know, isn't even in the Bible. I really think it's going to be Annas. He was high priest that year. Caiaphas, uh, they were both related. And I'm also, my third answer is going to be Herod. So Annas, Caiaphas, and Herod. All right. I told you if you get three correct, you guarantee yourself a spot in the final revelation. To get three right, you have to start with one. Does Josh have one right answer? Ooh, yes. There's one. Right. Yes. 
Are there two right answers? No, yes! Okay! Caiaphas, there you go. One more, and you guarantee yourself a spot in the final revelation. Are there three correct answers on the board? So now we go to the men of Motor City. Come on, Ron. Right. You got it, Ron. All right. You have to give me at least two right answers to have a shot at going on to the final revelation, okay? You ready for your question? Take a look at the board. Okay. In Genesis, which three of these were items God used to express to Abraham how plentiful his offspring would be? Dust, grass, sand, leaves, sheep, or stars? Uh, we're going to say dust, one. Okay. Sand, two. Okay. Stars, three. Dust, sand, and stars. You answered that so quickly, Ron. All right. Well, I told you you have to have at least two correct answers to stay here. Does Ron have one right answer? Yes, he does. Yes. yes. <laughs> two more. Two more. Two more. Two more. All right. One more, and you got a shot at this. Does Ron have two correct answers? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, he does. <laughs> Still in the game. How about that? All right, how about a little cushion? Does Ron have three correct answers? Oh, yes. Give it to me. Oh, yes. Give it to me. Yes! Wow. That was fun to watch, but I just put a little bit of pressure on bit. your shoulders, that was didn't impressive. I? Yeah, that was impressive. All right, you need two correct answers to make it to the final revelation. All right, okay? Jeff. All right, you ready, Renee, for your question? Ready as I'll be. Take a look. According to Exodus 12, 11, which three of these are ways the Israelites were instructed to eat the Passover meal? Cloak tucked in belt, bags packed, sandals on feet, staff in hand, camels fed, or face washed? Okay, now, I'm pretty sure a lot of the significance of the Passover meal obviously goes back to in Egypt when they painted the blood over their house and the angel of death passed over. And uh, the message to them that Jesus gave was that they, should, that they were ready to go out of Egypt, they were ready to leave. And that being ready makes me think that bags packed, sandals on feet would be right. Um, sandals on feet, I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive. Cloak tucked in belt. Maybe staff in hand makes sense, sandals on feet makes sense, bags packed makes sense to the reasoning that I just gave. Whether that's right or not, I guess is another thing. I think that's what I'm gonna go with, Jeff. I'm gonna go, my first answer can be bags packed, second answer, sandals on feet, third answer, staff in hand. So, I told you you need two to make it to the final revelation. Oh, I'm nervous. Your first answer, the one you were most confident about, was bags packed. Is bags pack correct? Oh. Whoa. Was, that was the one you were the most confident about. I was most confident about sandals on feet. Okay. Oh, God. It's okay, Nate. We got it, it's babe. It's okay, oh, babe. It's all right. I'm no hoping problem. you don't have to pack your bags. No. <laughs> That's mean, Jeff. The one you were most confident about now <laughs> is sandals on feet. Yeah. You need both of them to make it to the final revelation. Is sandals on feet correct? Oh. I'm in pain. Oh. Yes. yes. Woo! Woo! Oh, man. 
babe. God Goodness damn. gracious. Okay, honey, it's all, all right. right. Oh, man, this is hurts. You get this one right, the men of Motor City are going home. You get this one wrong, back to Hello Alabama. Kidney is going back to Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> Staff in hand. Oh, man. Is it right or wrong? Oh, man. Goodness gracious. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah! <laughs> Wagner Warriors and Hello Kidney, you have earned the right to play in our final revelation round for $20,000. Men of Motor City, you came in third, but what a great game. We're not sending you home empty-handed. $2,500 for your ministry. Keep blessing the people of Detroit. Thank you, y'all. Keep blessing, folks. Yes, Thank, sir. You. Thank you. Good meeting you, Jimmy. It was a pleasure. Keep blessing, people. Thank you, Ryan. Good job on that. Good job, guys. Bless you all. Bless you. Now, in the final revelation today, we are going to ask you questions about this category, the Book of Esther. Oh, great. So you can bet there are going to be some pretty tough questions in there. And for that reason, I'm going to give you 10 minutes for some good old-fashioned Bible studies. So right. here are your Bibles. Thank We're going to have you. you go backstage to prepare. So off you go, everybody. Good all luck. Right. should be an all-nighter on the Book of Esther in just a few minutes. The American Bible Challenge will be right back. Kirk, take it away. teams are deep in their Bibles, going over everything they can remember about the book of Esther. Israelites are, are in slavery. Okay. Esther is a Jew. The king likes her. She gets picked as queen. Start from it's the beginning. Esther. Okay. Okay. Esther's other name is, is Hadassah. Hadassah. Uncle named Mordecai. Haman was put to death by hanging. Everyone kills the Jews. Okay. That's what Haman said. That's what Haman said. Esther was of the tribe of Benjamin. Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Well, Bible study is officially over. Let's see what our teams learned about the book of Esther. Hello, Kidney, get on out here. Yeah. Hey, guys. Hey, Jeff. You ready for this? We're ready. Yeah. All right, let me explain how it works. You're going to have one minute to answer as many questions as you can on the book of Esther. I'm going to ask each of you one question at a time. You'll go, then you'll go, then you go until the time runs out. If you do not know the answer, you can say pass, and I will move on to the next question. Will you dim the lights, please? Okay, can we put 60 seconds on the clock? It's the Book of Esther. Let's start the clock. What is the name of the king who wanted a new queen? Xerxes. Correct. Mordecai refused to bow down to what man? Haman. Correct. What animal did Mordecai ride through the streets with Haman in the lead? Donkey. Incorrect. What was the name of the queen that Esther replaced? Uh, Ashar. Incorrect. What, by what other name was Esther known? H Hadassah. Correct. In Esther 1, how many days did King Xerxes' banquet last? Seven. Correct. In the story of Esther, Mordecai was from what tribe? Pass. King Xerxes had the book of Chronicles read to him because he couldn't what? Read. Incorrect. Before a young woman saw King Xerxes, how many months of beauty treatments did she receive? One. Incorrect. What was the name of the citadel where Xerxes lived? Pass. In the book of Esther, what holiday was established to celebrate victory over their enemies? 
pass. King Xerxes used what? Okay. Yeah. All right, you got four correct answers. What animal did Mordecai ride through the streets with Haman in the lead? It was a horse, oh. not a donkey. It was a horse. Name of the queen that Esther replaced was Vashti. 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 Yes. And the story of Esther, Mordecai was from what tribe? The tribe of Benjamin. King Xerxes had the book of Chronicles read to him because he couldn't do what? He couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't sleep. Read. He couldn't <laughs> sleep. Uh, before a young woman saw King Xerxes, how many months of beauty treatments did she receive? It was 12. Wow. Uh, what was the name of the citadel where Xerxes lived? Susa. And the last one in the book of Esther, what holiday was established to celebrate victory over their enemies? Purim. Wow. All right, four right. Uh, how you feeling about that? Not so good. Not so good. Not so good. That's all right. Strang good. Tough answers. Stranger things have happened on this show. <laughs> and here's the thing. You got Matt in the audience cheering yes. and praying for you Either there. Way, so, yeah. Either way, you got a baby on the way. That's right. All right, let's bring the Wagner Warriors out now. Welcome back, guys. Thank How's you. Going? How was study time? Felt good. good. Pretty good confident. All right, yeah. well, let me tell you, Hello Kid, and you got four correct answers. Awesome. So you need at least four right answers okay. to stay in the game, okay. five okay. to win it, okay? okay? All right, guys. Right now, it is anybody's game, so let's see who pulls out the victory when we come back. Don't go away. Oh. Here we go. In one minute, one team is going to be walking out of here with $20,000 for their charity. All right, Wagner Warriors, are you ready for this? We're ready. Yeah. Okay, as I told you, your opponents answered four questions correctly, yeah. so you need five to win. Hello, Kidney, if you guys will stand over there, please. Let me explain. I will ask you questions in order, first you, then you, then you. If you do not know the answer, you can say pass. I will move on to the next question, okay? Good luck. Dim the lights, please. Put 60 seconds on the clock. And start the clock. What is the name of the king who wanted a new queen? Xerxes. Correct. Mordecai refused to bow down to what man? Haman. Correct. What animal did Mordecai ride through the streets with Haman in the lead? Donkey. Incorrect. What was the name of the queen that Esther replaced? Vashti. Correct. By what other name was Esther known? Hadassah. Correct. In Esther 1, how many days did King Xerxes' banquet last? Seven. Correct. That is five correct answers. Congratulations. <laughs> yes! Great job, guys. Come back on out here. Congratulations, guys. You have just won $20,000. And you guys played so great. Five thousand dollars for you. That's gonna help somebody get an organ transplant. All right, Wagner Warrior will be coming back for our semifinals to play the winners of other shows for a chance to play for our grand prize of one hundred thousand dollars. Thanks, everybody. See you next time on the American Bible Challenge.